When I first saw the trailer and read the summary, the immediate thought that I had was, this is fresh, this is something different, this is something I've never seen before. If I look back at the shows and films that I've seen before, all I could think of is Fifty Shades of Grey that could come close to this. But I never really watched Fifty Shades of Grey all because it was more geared to the female audience rather than a general demographic. But on the TV show, my only wonder was how far are they going to take this? How far is, you know, going to be that boundary of how they're going to take this BDSM genre into the mainstream? Short answer, they took it far and then some. Hi, I'm MC Lorenzo. Today we are reviewing the TV series Bonding. Tiff, Tiffany, or Mistress May, our protagonist is a dominatrix. By nature, she really likes to dominate people. She likes to dominate people in her life, in her work, and even in her relationships. How the character was made and how it was written and how it was acted, it all really gelled very nicely because you see a dominatrix who tries so hard to dominate and control everything but when it comes back to her when things fall apart and she's not really you know equipped to handle it she just you know runs away she shies back because she cannot be vulnerable she cannot open her shell because everything is without her control if she opens up if she gives people her heart she kind of loses that control and she kind of loses her way because she is more comfortable being domineering, taking charge, taking control of everything. And I like how I saw that throughout the series that she was going high and low and she was really trying to be, you know, controlling and domineering. And I like that about her. One particular scene that stood out for me was when she was in class and she was trying to bear her soul. She was trying to reveal that her work is being a dominatrix. And that side of her, showing people who she truly was, was something that I really enjoyed because that vulnerability was a turning point for that character and evolution for that character and I like seeing that. Looking at the other main character, we have Pete. When I first saw Pete, he was really not that likable. I'm not really sure how I wanted to connect with the character because we have Tiff over here who's very strong and we have Pete who was totally different and very meek and very, you know, kind of shelled kind of tied down and the way he expressed that contrasting with the way Tiff is is just really different so now that I like Tiff I kind of dislike Pete in that way and when I saw that he has issues being a stand-up comedian you know stage fright his jokes weren't really that great I immediately realized that maybe down the line he'll use his experiences in the dungeon as material for his stand-up comedy and yeah that's kind of what happens but looking at it in a different perspective, I think what I enjoyed most about this character was his evolution. From a meek person, from the meek Pete, he comes alive and comes out in this very confident, funny Master Carter. And that evolution itself from meek to silent to someone who's really tossed around by Tiff to someone who stands on his own right to try and make into comedy. I like that evolution. That evolution was very entertaining to watch. For such a short series, there's a lot of supporting characters that are really great, especially Pete's roommate. Now, Mr. Rumi is straight, but he has a fetish or a kinky side in him that he likes a finger up his bottom. And that in itself is really funny and really kind of true. It speaks to that small, tiny demographic of straight men that likes a finger up their bums. And it's really refreshing to see that be on the screen and be, you know, 
experienced as a character and what they really like. Granted, the character is indeed weird and is kind of, you know, vapid, but the way it is portrayed, the way Pete tries to navigate that relationship, that's weird, odd relationship, it's really funny. Another character that I really like is the client who has a penchant for being peed on. He's very much representing a lot of what a client is in this kind of situation. Someone who likes to be dominated, someone who likes to be controlled, someone who likes to be, you know, abused, someone who likes experiencing pain and abusive relationships. This weird, funny character is how everything in BDSM is represented and it's just really fun seeing that character and all the situations that he enjoys. It's kind of icky and gross, but funny. Another character that I really like is the blonde classmate. She is really dumb in a way that she tries to compare her goldfish dying to a classmate's father dying. It's just, it's weird, it's funny, and it's really, you know, so stupid. But what I really like about her is the fact that I kind of hate her at the start and then there's something that happens with the teacher and we see her for a different light. And I like that the series made me feel that high and low for such a small character. I give this a rating of five out of five. It's really fresh, it's different. It's taking a controversial topic, a topic that people don't normally talk about, a taboo, that they spin in it in a way that people can actually relate to. We got characters that are heartbroken. We got characters that are lonely. We got characters that are vulnerable. But at the same time, they like the sex thing. They like, you know, kinky stuff. They like different outlandish things that makes you want to laugh, that makes you kind of like, what? It's just, it's crazy and it's lovable and it's dark and it's comedic and it's fun. Also with the professor acting as the villain of the whole series, throughout every episode, we didn't see much of a villain coming out until the professor comes in. And when he does come in, it's funny because for all of the dungeon stuff that happened, you would think that someone in that area would be a little bit more shady, would be a little bit more dangerous, but nothing ever happens. Everyone in the dungeon seems like they're cool about it. You know, they're just enjoying it, whatever it is. And then the villain comes up in the actual place where you feel safe, which is in class at school. So that kind of reversal is something that I really like. Although, I won't spoil it, there was another villain at the end which kind of defeats that, kind of puts back everything in perspective yet again of how dangerous it is for this kind of profession. Crazy fun scenes. We got a girl confessing to a guy doing number two in the toilet. And we got peas in the dungeon. We got penguins in the dungeon. And we got lines, lines that don't really make sense, but they're funny and somehow they kind of do make sense. Like for example, the real estate and then comparing it with anal and then making my soldiers, you know, all of these tidbits that make it so much fun and different and really entertaining. What I didn't really like about the series was the runtime of 15 minutes. Each episode lasted only about 15 minutes and I feel like it's a bit too short. It's too short to experience all of the characters of who they are, what they are like, and what they act about and what they don't really care about. All of these really fine details could have been, you know, fleshed out if they had more time. Though it was short, I did discover who the characters characters of Tiff and Pete really were. I've seen their heartaches, their pains, but I just wish there was just more time. It's fresh, it's different, it's definitely something that is not common. If you don't know much about the genre, haven't watched anything about it, or simply just curious about it, this is a definite good first step into opening your eyes into BDSM. You might not like it, you might hate it, or you might absolutely love it. It's definitely something that you should 
look on even if you're not really used to it. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please put them on the comments down below. If you want to see more videos and reviews like this in the future, please subscribe and hit that bell notification. My favorite scene was the part where we see two couples who like tickling and hitting each other. So that kind of weirdness and psychological behavior of them both and the scenes with carter and tiff you know taking care of them it's just weird and funny at the same time and i like that